morning. Hello. So good to be here with you. Please say hello. As you, it'd be nice to see who's here with me. Ah, hello, Dusty Rose. Good morning. Ah, people are trickling in. Yeah, please say hello. Where are you from? We'll get started in a minute. Carol, nice to see you. Good morning. Iris, good morning. Nice to see you. Cindy, hello from Parksville. Larry, hello from Saskatchewan. Jane, good morning from oh, I keep Philadelphia. Yes. And hi, Lois and Kim. Good morning. And Nusha, good morning. Tuning in from Oakland. Oh, I'm excited to have you here as well. Lovely to see you. Okay, well, I'm going to get started here because this is recorded. It's going to be posted to YouTube later. I can see your comments. And uh, yeah, Rosie, nice to see you. And so I can see your comments. I'll follow them as I talk. And yeah, um, hello and welcome all to Conscious Conversations for the month of the October, month of the metal dog, hard to believe, eh? Less than 100 days to Christmas. I'm here to share with you big picture questions. What's happening in the cosmos? How does that affect you and what can you do? Stay tuned. Not only am I going to talk about the bigger picture, yes, there'll be astrology and feng shui and activations, but I actually want to start off with a, a wish, if you will. Hi, Monica. Nice to see you. I'm going to, my wish is, like, I like to set an intention for every day, okay? And so here's my wish for you for this month, all right? Welcome dog month it starts today. New month, new day, new life. May the sun bring you new energy by the day. May the moon softly restore you by the night. May the rain wash away your worries. May the breezes blow new strength into your being. And may you walk through the world and your life and know its beauty, sorry, all your life. Why do I call these conscious conversations, okay? And not just feng shui or astrology talks. Because yes, as you know, I do that too. Because I like to ask the bigger questions. And the other thing that has struck me in my more than 30 years of studying feng shui is if it's all about energy and we're all connected, why? That is to me a spiritual thing. I affect you, you affect me. And I don't think we talk about that enough. And, and a spiritual thing is like love to me. And, and a negative thing is fear. And so how can we bring in more connection and more peace into our hearts? And so I ask those questions and I use astrology purposely to guide myself and you in that direction. So at a certain point in our lives, we all realize it's not just about changing the outside. It's like, oh, if I had the perfect feng shui, I'd be happy. And then you're not. Okay, so why? What's that about? Well, that's because they're inside all of us, whether it's between our past lives or different things that have happened in our childhood or things. There are thoughts and beliefs of different vibrations. Of course, love is a high vibration. Fear is a low vibration. And often when you do feng shui and activations, what actually comes up or looking at astrology is how to work with energy in a neutral way and to see that it's an opportunity because really what you're trying to do, you can't get to a higher place if you don't release where you're at. And that's why we do all these other activities and I'll talk to you about them in a minute. The first thing is I do want you all to have an astrology chart. So if you don't know your day master, or you don't know what animals are in your chart, Lois is going to post the link here. And uh, you can get, you know, get a copy of your chart. So these conversations that we do monthly are about showing you 
you always have a choice, always. Even though the cycles, I don't like using the terms bad or negative because I actually think everything is an opportunity. It's actually, you know, life is about change. We are here on earth. The cycles of nature go through birth to peak to death. And, but death is reborn. You cannot kill energy. You can only transmute it. And that's what we're here to do. So I'm here also with astrology to teach you, I guess, as well. Why did this happen to you? Why did I choose this? Now, why do I say, why did I choose this? Because on a soul level, you chose the moment you were born to be here, to have this life. And then maybe what's being revealed now is why. Okay, so all energy is connected. That's a really important thing to continually remember. And this is two ways. Not only does the energy that you align yourself with affect you, the energy that you put out affects the environment. Hence, your law of attraction, which we really cover a lot in the magic manifesting class or the manifesting magic class. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. But it's like how astrology just helps trigger in you the opportunity that can perhaps transform your life but how do you know that if you don't see it coming so let's talk more about that okay the overall astrology theme since 2019 has been rebirth okay rebirth and so last month for me it was my 65th birthday and birthdays are always a time of celebration but they're also for me a time always about contemplation where have I been? How has the last year been? And and what's coming, right? And how can I, so, you know, it's like, oh, is it a time to retire? Well, if I look at my chart, clearly not. <laughs> and so this is an, and then my one teacher would always say, suffering occurs when you're not in alignment with your destiny. So this would be, I always use the analogy, you guys know this, of tomato plants. So a tomato plant in autumn would suffer if it thought it should be growing, but it's not the time to grow. And so my chart clearly shows that for at least another five years, I'll be working with you guys. But I also do contemplation. What do I want that work to look like? Uh, what's important to me? What are my values? And those of you that follow me know more and more I'm bringing in consciousness work into the astrology and the feng shui because knowing your life purpose, knowing your dharma, knowing why you're here and adding that to working with time in a conscious way is so powerful. And so, yeah, people are already rebooking, you know, booking consultations for next year. But if you've never had a full consultation, whether it's with me or someone else, get someone to read your chart who knows how to look at soul purpose because lots of people, and probably this is happening to you too, are having major dramas in their life. But these dramas are there for a reason. This is, it's a spiritual year. And the dramas are coming up with what do you need to change to not have the drama? And the answer to that question is within you and your actions. It's not about anybody else changing, okay? And so how, for me, that meant, it's like, okay, I want to teach more about consciousness. So we have now more classes, manifesting magic and things like that, that focus on how to use the law, spiritual laws, as well as feng shui. Because I don't want to live in a world where it's win-lose. Because then we're separated. I actually want to live in a world where it's win-win. There's enough for everybody. There's enough. I want to live in a world that's kind and loving. And so I... I'm going to embody that. I am embodying that in the work I do. So yeah, what's your dharma, right? Have, and what are your lessons and what's happening for you? Well, when we change our perspective, for instance, this is, you know, the last few years, you guys might be surprised, have not been the best years astrologically for me. But what that meant is I worked with that energy in a conscious way so that I didn't feel sorry for myself, like, oh, I'm not getting the opportunities or I'm not this. No, I had to work strategically. And here's the other thing too. When you're conscious, you transcend the karma. That's big, huh? I've studied the charts of many, many Oprah, Eckhart Tolle, Byron Katie, spiritual people. They still all go through many ups and downs in their lives but they consciously deal with it and they don't suffer the way other people suffer. 
So the universe is always talking to us. And on some level, you know, we work with the cycles of time. All of us do. We, we plant our gardens at a certain time. We do activities in the summer that we don't do in the winter, right? The universe, but it's even speaking us deeper, deeper. And I imagine, especially if you're here today with me and later watching this on YouTube, you've been having events happening in your life that are making you question, who are you? So why have all these, if astrologically the theme has been rebirth, right? What's the purpose of that? Well, the big thing that's happening with the universe talking to us in the last few years is fear, right? Fear, COVID, war, uh, gas prices, you know, storing, like why do we use, why is the universe creating fear? Well, it's a choice for us to feel fear. But the thing is, we're feeling fear because we're meant to look deeper at our lives and not just react to get rid of the fear. What has to happen for that to go away? Okay. And so why is that all happening? Because we're waking up. We're waking up by looking at the fear. We're using different modalities to try and understand who we are and why we're here. And by waking up, what's the biggest thing that we're waking up to is that we are powerful manifestors that not only is time like we are conscious beings and so our thoughts can help create the future indeed they are what's interacting with the future that has always been the case with spiritual laws but what's happening now is we are all waking up to the fact to how powerful a manifester we actually are no matter who you are what your chart is or what that is you are a manifester so to evolve your consciousness is why we're here so one of the simplest things could be, do you choose love or do you choose fear in your actions, right? Because you want fear is separating. Love is joining. You want more energy in your life. You actually have to consciously learn how to be more loving. It's that simple. Okay, so why is metaphysics important? Because the invisible energies of astrology and feng shui can support us right? Can support us. It's a tool. It's just a tool. And so we are vibrational beings and we are affected by energy. So we use feng shui to align the vibrations of what we want, money, relationships, health, and we use time to specifically align our actions. And so that's taking us to time right now. Today, the month of the metal dog starts. And so this is the third month, the last month of the metal season. And so it's what we call a graveyard month. There's four graveyard animals a year. The dog is a graveyard animal. That's nothing to be afraid of. But what happens because it's the last month of the season, it's a month of transition. So the energy of metal is being put to bed and new energy is being born for the next season. And the next season, next month is water. So this metal is affecting all of us. Okay. So the energy overall, I also am an adept Western astrologer in addition to being a Chinese astrologer. I've studied both now for 40, 50 years between the two of them. And this is eclipse season now. And so the, the energy this month is intense, but it's intense in a way of what do you need to let go of? Who do you need to forgive? And this will be the theme in our moon presentation circle, moon circle that's happening on Monday, right? Because no two things can occupy the same space at the same time. So if you have resentment in your heart, how can you bring in more good things? So true metaphysics is doing outer work of action and things like that, and inner work of meditation, releasing faulty beliefs, looking at your thought patterns, changing your thought patterns. All right. The theme for October is change. Okay. And it's a key theme because it, the nature is going into hibernation. We are entering into the stillness. We are in the yin months of the year. And so in the yin months, the focus is more inward, right? So the dog though is about a transformational energy. So this is a very good month to do inner personal growth work to get in touch with what needs to change. Western astrology also points to this month being one of endings and beginnings, okay, but beginnings of significance. So I have talked to so many people in readings in the last few weeks, leaving marriages, long marriages, 20, 30 years, having health issues and having to make drastic lifestyle changes, right? 
and you will suffer if you think that's a bad thing. But if you know that that's your path to happiness, yes, you're going to grieve and you're going to go through a change. But if you allow that, the potential that's coming in the future with period nine coming, which is a term in Chinese astrology of we are entering in 2024, 20 years of fire. And fire is always the energy that transforms you. In Western astrology, we're entering the age of Aquarius. They're talking about going into the 5D, you know, all these things that they all say the same thing. They are talking about we are actually being coming empowered in this lifetime to change our karma. Whereas before it was kind of like you had to be reborn to live that life. But this lifetime we're realizing you don't have to go through those cycles. You can change your life now already. The metal dog is a powerful month. Uh, it's one of what we call the 10 spiritual. For those of you that study astrologer, you know, you know Chinese astrology, you know what that means. And it's what also we call a Ficom or chief general. The energy with that is the path of self-discovery is huge this month. And the metal, we need metal for courage. So there's two months left with metal. There's metal this month and there's metal next month. Metal pig, a little bit. And then we're not going to have metal for quite a while, at least 10 months. In the next few years, the metal energy is going to be very weak. So I'm really going to encourage you, if you've been struggling with courage, this is the month to step forward because the metal energy will help you have action, authority, and courage. All right? Yes, you will go through hardship. You know the picture that we put up there. Are you the rusty sword? Or are you going to Excalibur? And even more so, if we look at that, the image, I'll talk about that in a second, but it's like the each, like the metal dog has lower, force, lower forms of representation in energy and higher forms. So the lower form is a rusty axe, a rusty, you know, sword. Not very useful. But the higher form can be Excalibur, and they even associate, one of my teachers says, the higher form is Genghis Khan, one of the greatest generals that ever lived, right? So let me just see here. I'm going to jump around here a little bit. Okay. This month, water tiger, it's the water tiger year, and it's the metal dog month. And the day for the month is wood horse. Today is a wood horse day. So what that actually means is there's a full frame of fire. Those of you that study astrology, because dog, tiger, and horse make fire. So what does that mean? Along with the metal, there's a lot of fire this month, and fire is about transformation. So this, again, is a month I'm going to encourage you to dig deep and take action, especially this year. I've taught this all year, 2022. Their portals are open because the seeds that you plant this year are what will bring the opportunities for well, and okay, I think you can always create change. But if you do them this year, it's like you've sort of put your order into the universe. But every time you put your order into the universe, you have to take action. And I think this is another important thing. A lot of people think when you do a manifestation or you do an activation or something like that, you're going to feel happy. A lot of times happiness is, uh, th that's not the first thing that happens when you do an activation. What usually comes up is a lot of discomfort because you have to look at what's in the way and you have to deal with it. You know, you have to deal with it. So how many of you, especially there's four months left this year. So this is really the energy of this year as well. How many of you have conversations where with need to have conversations with people about how you're feeling? how this isn't working, especially those of you that are in long-term relationships. It takes work to have a good relationship. This is the month to have a conversation that's honest and truthful and vulnerable in a respectful way of what you want. And maybe then you could be on the same team and sort of support each other to move forward. There's a lot going on. Karmically, the choice for all of us this month, especially anytime you see, because the main energy in the dog is also earth. So we have fire and earth happening. Full fire frame and there's earth. Earth is karma. Fire is transformation. And why is earth karma? Because everything that's tangible is made from the earth. And everything that's intangible spiritually comes from heaven. And we associate that with fire and transformation and illumination. 
So you have a choice this month to create actions that create more karma, or you have a choice this month to do actions that release karma. That's big, huh? You know, big. And so, yeah, it's a very powerful month. This is the powerful energies are there to support us all. I'm going to go into each day master for healing, transformation, and mental reprogramming. Okay. And so this could all result in the birth of a new mindset or alter your perspectives with wisdom gained. So there's a saying, nothing will change unless something new comes in or something new comes out. Well, something new comes out could be a new idea that you act on, could be a baby, could be like something new that you do, a product. Where something new comes in could be knowledge, right? Knowledge that chains your perspective. So yeah, the dog is the last month of the metal season. Courage, decision making are all things we are important for all of us this month. You've got uh, 31 days or 30 days. And this is a good month for hope, getting clear on what you hope to create for the next four to six months. And so I really encourage you with the getting clear, one of the things you can do, and it's free event as well, is we have a moon circle. Okay, and we do this monthly, but part of there's I do some teaching and then we do uh, around a certain theme or whatnot. We're going to talk about this one, forgiveness, but clarity. So many times we have thoughts in our head that prevent us from actually doing the thoughts that getting to the thoughts we want. And so in the moon group with the meditations, there's a teaching, then there's a guided meditation and then there's a sound meditation that by my dear friend Yuko. And the sound, it's an hour and a half, okay, and it's Monday night at 7 o'clock. I really encourage you to sign up and join us for that because this is one of the places where you can allow yourself, especially after the guided meditation and in the sound meditation, to allow what needs to be seen to be revealed, okay? Because that's part of the work here in getting to where you want. I mean, you know, there's a saying uh, in Think and Grow Rich, famous book, uh, personal growth work for, uh, for many, it, it, it's not just about money, it talks about mindsets. But he says one thing clearly, it is easier for someone born into a rich family to be rich than for someone born into a poor family to be rich. And that's like, well, why could that be? Because someone that's born in a rich family knows that mo there's money in the world, knows, just has an innate feeling about money, that it's possible, there's people out there with money, that people have money in that. So if that's your vibration, that it's possible to have money, you attract it in. When you're born into a poor family, your belief becomes that you have to struggle. And most people are not aware of their subconscious beliefs. And if you have a belief that life is a struggle, guess what you pull in? Evidence that life is a struggle. And so we're here, not only with astrology and feng shui, to help guide you to changing your thoughts so that you get to peace and harmony and abundance and all those things because this is what we all deserve. Okay, so the hexagrams for this month are stagnation and peel. So each astrology month has a hexagram. The hexagrams are not so good. So globally, the predictions are for this month, mm, not a good month to start a new investment, not a good month to start new things. I expect that there will be more evidence in the world, if you will, of fearful things. But what if you never watched the news? What if you only went out and cut flowers in your garden and gave food to people who love you and focused on that? Would you have fear? You know, it's like, so what do you focus on that brings you positive energy? Well, the tendency this month, if you're not conscious, is you're going to focus on fear because there's going to be things that make you fearful and there'll be weather related issues and there'll be different things. They're already happening. You guys know this and see this. The trick is here is to, I've known, I, I realized actually, I guess I'm fortunate. I was around grade six, so many moons ago, the Cuban Missile crisis was happening and we were being taught at school how to hide underneath your desk. And then right after that, I remember, and I was so afraid, I'd pray at night, make the war end. And then after that, there was the Vietnam War and then I'd pray for that. And then, it, and then there was after that, something else. And at one point I realized there's always something to be afraid of and none of it is in my backyard. It's just out there. 
And I made a choice as much as I can, and I'm not there by any means, but as much as I can to go, it's not true. That doesn't have to be my truth. What is my truth? What do I want? So yeah, the October outlook in general is things are not progressing, energy is stagnant, release expectations. And so lack of communication can make things worse, right? And so, yeah, the bigger question then in that, because if everything happens for you, not to you, and the bigger question then is how, why? Always ask, why is this happening? What is there here to see? What is this showing me, all right? So as we enter more and more into period nine, oh, and actually here, you know what the question is for October too? What are your values? What? are your values and do you consciously live them because it's not about other people living them and your values do they make your heart feel happy so this is the month maybe to pick a value trust integrity uh, kindness right kindness is a beautiful value you know like pick a value and courage right metal use the metal courage speak your truth to someone right understanding there's a big one too okay if those are your values are you good at understanding others are you good you want to be accepted are you good at accepting others so it's not so much about doing things in the physical world this month it's about doing things in your inner world and I talked about this last month I'm going to mention it again all your emotions are powers when I read that earlier this year, it changed my life, honestly, because when I just realized, wow, that's true. Love is a power. Fear is a power. Just like we could say star four is a power, star eight is a power, those of you in flying stars, they are, but they actually get activated by your personal powers, okay? So your day master, okay, we're going to talk now about the charts. Yeah, hello, all of you that are joining late, and I see some new names, Shalin, lovely, and Aman, lovely to see you. Okay, so now we're going to get into the 10 day masters. So I haven't gotten to the point here yet where um, I'm using slides and all that stuff, so you're going to have to use your imagination. Imagine that, okay? It doesn't have to be all right in front of you. So we're going to go through the 10 day masters and talk a bit about how the metal dog is affecting you because this is actually more pertinent to how to use the energies than I would say the animals. Okay, because the animals, it's different and re really also understand this is all light stuff because really to do a proper reading, we have to look at your whole chart. All right, so wood day masters. All right, so two animals, the, yeah. so the energy of the month is metal dog. I'm just going to say to anybody who has wood rabbit in the chart, if you have wood rabbit in the chart as a full pillar, that is a complete combine, what we call heaven and earth combined to the metal dog. So especially if this is your day pillar, this next month should be a very good month for you. But even if it's anywhere in the chart, opportunities are going to come to you. So what kind of opportunities do you want to transmute, right? And really the question there is, are you ready to say yes to the opportunities? You won't get a month like this for five years. The cycle is a cycle of 60. So anybody who has wood rabbit in your chart, it's a full combine, okay? Yang wood day master, okay? Yang wood day master. So this is for all you trees. If you're a yang wood day master, so your day master, by the way, if you haven't looked at this before, hi, Anne, is the top and the top energy on the top of the day. So your your pillar, there's four pillars in the chart, like wood rabbit, fire monkey, earth rooster, whatever. On your day pillar are two animals, the one are energies, you want to look at the top. Okay, so if you are Yang Wood, right, Ja, the month is seven killings with indirect wealth. So I'm going to use a combination of um, a little bit speak for people who studied and a little bit for those of you who have not studied this at all. The image for the tree, if you will, with metal dog is a tree growing in dry earth, hard dry earth, okay? So persistence is the key. This is not an easy task for you, right? And so the energy around you is aggressive, right? Your best mindset for you this month is I am a survivor. 
However, with the seven killings energy and what we call indirect wealth, seven killings is not killings, by the way. It's a term in astrology used to describe how it neutralizes another energy, but it's not you, okay? But what it does is, this is like metal chopping the tree. A beautiful tree needs to be pruned, right? In order for the tree to have more fruit, we prune it. So what the opportunity for you is this month is to prune yourself, to prune yourself to become a better, so diversify, get more knowledge. You know, this is an excellent month to use your courage to create change. Okay, so for those of you that are Yang Wood, how do you want to create change in your life? This is the month to think about and to take some action and persistence is your key here, all right? Persistence. Yin Wood. Okay, so for yin wood, the energy is a little bit different this month. It's what we call direct officer and direct wealth. And so this is a month for you that is about influence and power. Okay, and traditionally, we look at that as good, right? However, how are you going to use that, right? It's like, okay, influence and power. Well, if you're yin wood, you are a flower or a vine. Okay, and so one of the thoughts, I love Chinese astrology because it's very pictorial, whereas if I say you're a Virgo, it's really not, I mean, we see the Virgin, but if I say you're Aries, like what are the images? Whereas with this, the images are very clear in how they work with nature. Yin wood is a vine or a flower. So what's the job of a flower? To be appreciated, right? And what's the job of a vine, so to speak? To creep along the ground right? It creeps and it grows up on things and it uses things. So traditionally, yin wood is considered to be a great networker. Now you have the energies this month to be a better networker, but use the energies to network with influential people. That's the key for you this month. Now, by networking with influential people, if getting a better job is key for you down the road, you could meet people who could do that. Um, it's a good month to connect and influence people in higher positions, okay? So that you show somebody who's your boss, oh, look what I've been working on, or show them stuff that you've been doing so that you can get seen. Your wealth element is present this month as well. So by being a good networker with people of influence, people that are higher than you, if you will, you will that will turn to money, okay, at some point for you. Yang Fire Daymaster with the metal monkey is um, having a metal monkey i'm over the place here with metal dog but the fire day master is having a uh, a clash if you will to the metal but it's a clash of where they're controlling the money and so it's curious it's like the clashes they're going after it but they're also in a way feeling there's blockages going towards it that's part of the, the thing and so Anyways, the answer, the energy for this month for you, Yang Fire Day Masters, is be innovative. Okay, you've got indirect wealth with eating God, and eating God energy is being innovative and pushing out new ideas or pushing out new thoughts. And because it comes with a wealth element, you could get paid for it. Okay, so this is a month for you to be strategic now, especially Yang Fire Day Masters. Because there's no metal really coming up for the next while, this metal, the wealth element is strong for you this month. And so make sure you use it, right? So how do you use it? Have a good product or have good ideas. Don't be hasty because first impressions are very important, right? So the wealth element always means work. So you have a lot of wealth element this month. The higher your quality of work and product, the more money you can potentially realize. So that's for Yang Fire. Yin fire also has the wealth element but it, and an output element, but it, we call that direct wealth and hurting officer. The message is be hard working, yeah, because wealth is always about work. You don't make money without working, okay? So be hard working and let others appreciate you, all right? So do things for other. This is a good month to be seen, and that's because you have the output element there. And so you have now wealth with output. If you show people how productive you can be, Whoever it is you're trying to impress, you will be seen and rewarded. Earth Day Master. Okay, so there's two Earth Day Masters. There's Yang Earth and Yin Earth. I don't know if you can hear the loud truck outside, but um, Earth Day Master, Yang Earth, we'll start with that. Okay, so inside the dog is 
yang earth as well as some other elements and on top is metal so you have output eating god with friend element okay with friend element so what does that mean be innovative but work together with other people so the friend element is always a bit like a nobleman it's someone who will support you someone who help you get ahead so you have the friend element this month with output element let your friends talk about your ideas to people get them out there ask for what you need brainstorm with others get feedback this is the month for you to be innovative and do that and this will turn into money for you but it will um, no matter what the thing even say you need to brainstorm about relationships or how to do things differently this is the month to get people to help you even if it's just with ideas okay so earth day master very supportive whereas yin earth right yin earth the combination to this month is different because yin and yang interact with all the elements differently. This is an aggressive combination for you this month with the, you know, and I'm blanking out on the name of the dog. It's a metal dog. <clears throat> I should write it down. Too many things in my head. And so yin earth, what's happening, it's an aggressive combination. We call it hurting officer with Rob Wealth. And anytime Rob Wealth comes along, it's not about somebody who's going to steal your money. Actually, what could happen is you feel insecure. And because you feel insecure, you spend money to impress other people, but not in a smart way. You're trying to buy friendships or you're trying to buy people liking you because you're comparing yourself with other people. And then you react in a way that's not beneficial. So you're comparing yourself to others. You're going to want attention. And so you want to be careful how you then react to that because the trick is you could actually use other people this month, if you will, by strategically aligning yourself or connecting with people out there because you're going to be connecting. The energy is out there with people connecting. Now the choice is yours. Who do I connect with consciously to help support me moving forward? then you can use this in a very positive way to brainstorm and things like that. And so leverage on other people. You want attention this month and you are comparing yourself insecurely to other people. You're gonna to need to overcome that. People want to be around you. Now go out there and pick their brains and get ideas. Because what's pick their brains and get ideas? That's Rob Wealth. Now, instead of them taking your ideas, you are meeting with people and asking good questions. And this isn't strategically bad. You're doing it with a good heart. It's just like, oh, what could this person teach me that could help me? Now you're using it strategically. Metal Day Masters. Yang Metal Day Master has friend and indirect resource this month. You are supported, or this could also be a month to support others, right? It could go both ways. And it comes with what we call indirect resource which can be like a nobleman helping energy. Your intuition is higher, but maybe it is also your intuition is higher that you help other people. And by getting seen for that, you get rewarded, if you will. Friends will help, but you're going to have very strong feelings this month. The whole year you've had strong feelings because of the water tiger. They're going to happen more this month. The thoughts of comparing and, and, and different ways. How do you, I, like I'm a Yang metal day master. And so one of the things that I've done this year, even with working with the energies, is strategically, how can I support others? And the question wasn't, even with things like this, right? And the question as I did that wasn't of how am I going to get paid? I actually knew by doing what was the right action that abundance would follow. And that's exactly what's happened. Sometimes you have to give things away or do things you love. It's not always about getting the contract. And so curiously, how is that manifested for me overall? Is I'm getting, lead, people are contacting me that I've never known who are interested in doing a feng shui consultation or taking a class or different things. And so the energy gets rewarded for other areas of my life. It's not necessarily just from here. So it's interesting. Even for me, after 30 years of doing this, okay, yin metal has Rob Wealth and Direct Resource. So uh, you too are comparing yourself to other people. And that's always a tricky thing to do. The best thing to do that is because you can do comparing like, oh, it's not fair, which is a big thing going on in metal all the time is fairness and, and, and how what's not fair. 
what's right and wrong, justice. Those are big emotions for mental people. But you're, when we compare ourselves to other people, instead of reacting in a negative way, again, follow people who you would like to be more like and get ideas. You know, maybe that's Tony Robbins. Maybe that's Oprah. Who is that? Is it Eckhart Tolle? Like, who is it? And then take what they teach you and become more of that. That's an other way of using this energy. So if you compare yourselves to others and spend money to be like them, you may give away too much of yourself. So this is a month to have the courage of what you want to do for yourself and to speak up. Okay, this is a month to do that. Okay, last two day masters, and then we'll get briefly into the animals and feng shui and activations. Okay, yang water. So the energy of yang water has indirect resource and seven killings. This is not your most favorite energy. Okay, the image is, if, is the metal because there's so much water is rusting. And what the implication of that is energetically is you have very strong emotions, especially combined with indirect resource. Because indirect resource can make you, your intuition is higher. But if you're not conscious, sometimes you're in, or depending on where your thoughts are coming from, you might be thinking, oh, that person's out to get me. The world's not safe. Uh, that person, you know, did something to me I don't like. And so it's very easy to go that way with strong indirect resource. So be suspicious. The trick here is to go, how am I going to consciously use my intuition this month to tap into positive energies? So this might not be the best month for you to watch the news. This might not be the best month to hang out with negative people because you are, and water people are already very sensitive. They absorb the energy of people around them. So this is a month for you to take care of your energy, have salt water baths. I mean, that's always good for anybody, right? But salt water baths, clean your aura. Make sure if you've had a bad day, you, you change out of those clothes and you wash them. Like, you know, you, you, you change your sheets perhaps more this month, like those types of things. Because it's a, there's a lot of feelings happening this month. And now what can happen when you have a lot of feelings is then you take unnecessary risks or you get into addictive behaviors or you just do things impulsively, you eat too much because you can't handle the feelings. This is a good month to actually feel your feelings and go for a walk. Just watch them. They are going to pass. It's by when we let a feeling land, then it doesn't pass. And what this is a really good month for you to learn how to replace a negative feeling with a positive feeling. So then again, I'm going to say, come over to our moon group, because that's one of the things we do there is we talk about how to work with that. OK, so Yang Water, this is a good month for you actually to explore new opportunities. If you use your intuition that way, because your instincts are good, it's a good month to explore your fears and overcome them. Learn how to cope with your fears. Last but not least is Yin Water Daymaster, OK, direct resource and direct officer. Those are two of what we call the three precious, okay, the three precious. And so with that, they're always considered in the classics as two of the more favorable energies, right, when you have one of the three precious coming up. And really, there's more to it than that. But resource is your knowledge is strong this month, okay? And so sharpening your knowledge, there's the energy of knowledge there for you to acquire knowledge, get knowledge. So this is a good month to sharpen your knowledge but it comes with an influence element called direct officer that's very favorable. So by sharpening your knowledge, like just doing something on your own, people that are above you, direct officer technically means somebody above you, like a boss or something like that. They will see what you're doing and it will give you more authority and command of your life. So this is a good month to get more knowledge and then practice what you've learned and let somebody see what you've done, and this will turn into, uh, yeah, opportunities for you. So isn't it cool that 12 months a year, there's 12 different energies that we can all tap into, right? Whether, like, do you guys know when is your strongest wealth element, and when is, you know, like the different, when's the best months to learn, when's the best months to travel, when's the best months to do is, like I work with many business people who do sales, ask me for, the calendar, if you will, 
When's the best month to do my big launches? When's the best month to do these? I use this all the time. And so, yeah, uh, I really encourage you to either get a reading or to study astrology. Many of you here are actually practitioners and do that as well in your own life. Um, but yeah, astrology for me has been a tool that has helped me get to where I am, not only just by focusing on what's good, but also understanding, ah, oh, this isn't my favorite month. Okay, I better go for more walks, maybe clean up my diet. See, this is the other thing too. The universe, okay, so say I, the, I've had some Chinese teachers that talk about fate and then you're doomed, right? I don't see it that way. So say, for instance, something bad happens to you, like a car accident and you're injured. Well, what happens then is you have to heal. So your whole lifestyle changes as you're in that process of healing. Well, when you understand what's coming, you don't have to have the car accident. You can start the process of healing because that's what the universe wants you to do. Or if there's a clash happening, like this is the month of the dog. We're going to talk about dragon in a minute. Anybody who has dragon in their chart, and you've already had a hard year. I've said to anybody this year who has rat and dragon in their chart that this is a year of serious soul searching for you. But what do you want? Now with dog month, there's a clash happening to the dragon. Okay, a clash means change. If you don't change, and all of us have in the back of our minds certain areas of our life where we need to make changes. Maybe it's take better care of our money. Maybe it's, it's you know, phone our mother more often. Maybe it's, I need to be kinder to my husband and more appreciative. I don't know. There's areas where we have change needed. This is the month, if you have dragon in your chart, to create the change on your own. Because then the universe doesn't whack you. You know, it only happens, and even if it does whack you, it's only because it's trying to tell you this is where you should focus and change. Especially if you're putting out intentions to the universe, I want to be happy. Well, sometimes I want to be happy means what has to change, right? Sometimes, you know, and some of those are hard. Let's just talk about the animals here a little bit. And so every month, there's certain animals that combine with the energies and there's certain animals that clash with the energies and certain ones, they have interactions and they have lovely names, destruction and harm and punishment, etc. like that. Don't get caught up in the names. Um, they are just about, they are opportunities to work through those areas of your life. Now, two of the main teachers that I've been working with in the last few years have also taken their practices into a more spiritual way of looking at things. And the spiritual thing is more understanding why things happen and working them from a consciousness perspective. Because money is not always the answer. It doesn't fix everything. It doesn't fix necessarily. I mean, it keeps you distracted in a relationship, but it doesn't necessarily make you feel worthy or different things. So each month, different opportunities come up for us to actually look at our inner self as well as take actions in our outer world. Now this month, the most favorable animals, if you will, are the rabbit, the tiger, and the horse. Okay, the tiger and the horse. And so even I would say it's, it's a combination. Okay, and what they're going to bring, they bring you, like I can't get into what they're all going to bring, but because they're a combination, they're bringing you opportunities. So this is a good month, especially if you have it on the day. If it's on the day, it's in your personal life. It's a, if, you, the, if you have rabbit, tiger, horse in your day or hour, it's your personal life where the, the opportunities are. And if you have them in the month and year, it's your external life outside of the home where the opportunities are. Okay, So an opportunity is coming. But usually what also happens with an opportunity when you have a combination is you're more popular. People like you. They want to hang out with you and all that stuff. So because that's happening, you get distracted and waste the opportunity. So this is a month to go look for opportunities, find opportunities, depending. You know, they don't come along all the time and use them, particularly because tiger and horse especially are associated with fire to create real change and transformation in your life. This is a month for you. Monkey and rooster also have to a degree a type of combination with the dog because they're part of the seasonal energies. All right. And so again, though, because it's a seasonal energy, it's a little bit different in that it, and metal, emotionally too, can be, uh, metal curiously is one of the most emotionally sensitive energies. 
but it doesn't show it on the outside. It is only on the inside. So some anxiety and some different things will come up, but, and it's a combination. So, oh, your anxiety comes up. Then the question is, what am I supposed to learn from this? Where is that coming from? How do I transmute this? So also, a great month for you to do inner personal growth work. Okay, The goat and the dog. Not necessarily best friends. Okay, So the goat, I would say, if you have goat in your chart, you want to... Um, okay, so one of the things, they call it a destruction. So something too, I don't know, especially those of you that are practitioners may not all know, is that a combination or a destruction or any of those things can happen two ways. It can happen to you or you can do it to someone else. Okay, because it can never happen to you if that energy isn't inside you already. So with the goat, there's a destruction coming this month, which can lead to feelings of abandonment and rejection. So what I would say is, is what area of your life are you not telling the truth in a kind way? Because when we don't tell the truth, really the energy that we're coming up with is resentment. So then people can feel that, you know, energetically, resentment or, I don't, you know, anger, different emotions. And so if you have those things running inside of you, somebody else might blow you off this month. I don't know, take credit for your idea. Uh, different things could happen, right? But it's not a comfortable energy, okay? So the goat, particularly this month, there's two energies. There's the destruction and there's also a bullying punishment. We'll talk about that in a sec. You're going to either feel that you have lost control and you need to become more controlling, and that's not the right thing to do. This is actually a month where you look at what can you control, what is your business, what's not your business, and then clean up what's your business. So that moving forward, and then make sure you behave in a way to others that you want them to behave to you. Okay, as I said, the dragon has a clash. Something's coming to an end. So you decide what you want to end. Maybe you want to end your caffeine addiction. Maybe you want to walk more. Maybe you want to end a... Uh, communication problem you've had with somebody in your family and you want to reach out and talk to them right but or maybe you want to just change how you're doing your work like different things so there's a clash coming it's a time so rebirth what do you want focus on what you want not on what you don't want and go in that direction the rooster has two things like so yes there's a combination <laughs> Yeah, yes, there's a combination, and there's also for the rooster what we call a harm. And the reason they call it a harm is because the dog is best friends with the rabbit, and the rooster clashes the rabbit. So the feeling that happens here for the rooster this month with the harm might be that you, you start feeling insecure, especially too, because there's lots of metal happening. So it's kind of like this raw ball, but you feel insecure, and then you start thinking other people are more special than you. Or something if you just don't feel like you're good enough you feel undervalued and so the harm can also be that some you I don't know could be thing betrayed you right like I'm having a bunch of people over for Thanksgiving dinner and but, but I don't I'm gonna cook the whole dinner because then I don't have expectations on anybody else if people want to bring stuff great but you know it's like I have rooster in my chart but it's like oh, okay I'm I'm I know from many years of previous experience with this um, particular harm is that at times then I don't feel good enough. Now that's an old story for me. I don't feel good enough. So the opportunity for me with working at that is I could look at my old belief and go, that's not true. I am good enough. I can work with this. Now, metal doesn't necessarily give me the support that I want. So I have to go get support or I have to choose to do things myself. So there are ways to work with that, right, strategically. And one of the biggest ways with all of these is don't take anything personally, right? Just don't. The last two animals that have kind of an interaction with the dog that we don't love so much is goat and ox again. And it's the bullying punishment. So what can happen in the bullying punishment is there's probably a lot of expectations on you happening in life, like whether it's you need to visit your mom who's in the hospital or you, you're, you know, there's just a whole bunch of things happening. 
and and that you feel obligated to. So bullying is when you're being pressured to do something you don't want to do. Now remember, this can happen both ways. Where are you controlling and bullying others? Because the bullying punishment, all these negative aspects, everybody, the positive and the negative, but the negative particularly, they disappear when you realize that that's actually a karmic thing that you're here in this lifetime to heal. And you heal that by changing your thoughts. And that's the part that I'm bringing now into all my classes and into all the work we do is how do we heal our thoughts to thoughts that I am worthy of abundance. I am worthy of support. I am worthy of all these things. So if I haven't talked about the other animals, it's because they're not really having an interaction with the dog this month. Okay, these are the ones that have the main interactions. All right, so let's get into a little bit of feng shui and then we'll wrap this up. Okay, and so the feng shui that I talk about is primarily here with the flying stars. Okay, and the flying stars is a method that's been around for hundreds of years. And we're just talking about, if not thousands of years, the annual energies. Okay. And so two things, if you know what your life gua is, that's one thing. So, and um, I'm actually not sure if we have a calculator for the life gua, but the font you can, um, most people here will know what your life gua is. The first thing every month to pay attention to is your life gua and that sector of your life. So there's nine numbers and they all have a sector, north, south, east, west, southeast. Like my sector, I'm an eight, is the northeast. So I know always that the northeast sector of my house is a very important aspect to feng shui because it's me, it reflects me. And this is outside and inside my house. Okay, so first thing I would say is every month, do you clean that sector that is you? Right? How well do you take care of that energy? Right? And so every month, that's one way to sort of activate you, regardless of what energy is there, all right? to clean it and to take care of that. This month, I would say the very best sectors, there's a combo 10. Some of the speak is a bit maybe too technical for you, but the short of it is there's a combo 10, which is good for money, which is in the Northwest. And it's good for discipline and courage. So the thought is as well, when you hang out in certain environments, you're going to pick up that energy. So have you ever had that when you are hanging out with somebody who's really negative and you walk away and you feel like crap, right? You just feel like crap. Or you hang out with somebody who's really happy and it lifts you up. You know, you go to some workshops and you come back and it's just amazing how you feel. Well, feng shui is kind of the same. The sectors in your house are like people, if you will. And when you hang out with them, they bring you different things, but it's not all harmony and peace. Some are aggressive, some are transformative, some are enlightening. Like really, a lot of this depends on what you want. Feng Shui isn't about making your house so it's good for harmony or peace. It's actually strategically making your house so that it supports your health in the right sectors, and you use those sectors, that it supports your uh, abundance, making money and opportunities, okay? So for this month, if you can sit in the Northwest, now it has to be an area you like, right? You're not gonna go sit on the toilet in the bathroom because I said, oh, Northwest is good, right? And the energy is there, it's, it's good for learning, it's good for discipline, the, comp, the stars are six and four. Um, leaders can, um, it's good for leadership, it's good for finding people to help you. If you can use that sector at work, it's, it's a peach blossom star, so it makes you more attractive. So overall, Northwest sector is very good. I like that because I'm sleeping in the Northwest. So just sleeping there is already good. All right. And then the, uh, the North is pretty good. You know, the North sector is pretty good. There's the one eight there. And um, the hexagram is bliss, which is also nice. But um, this the energy in the north will make you more efficient or more productive it's a it's a good energy for that okay and so i'm also going to move one of my chairs in the living room to sit in the north sector and i'm going to sit there in the morning and do my meditations or that type of thing okay then the what did i put here sorry northwest is good and north and northeast are okay Okay, so really that's the bottom line as to the best sectors this month. The Northeast is good energy there. It's about wealth and power. But there's no point in sitting there if you don't have 
wealth to manage and power that you need to execute, right? Like, so this is very good for self-employed people or high level management people or that type of an energy. Good to deepen your understanding around money and wealth issues, okay? We could say too, the East is not bad, but it's a bit tricky because the three one combination, the three for some people, if you haven't mastered the art of negotiation and communication, and you spend time in the East, you're going to have more arguments. So some of the classics, and I mean, you guys that follow this, you see negative names for different stars. They're only the negative aspects. So they can come up too with forms and things like that. And even let's just talk about that. The three is known as an argument star, and it's in the East. And so you're, you, the house you live in might have bad feng shui in the East, if you're someone that likes to argue a lot because you have not mastered your emotions so that you know how to have conversations that are about negotiation instead of making other people wrong, right? Arguments to me are about right and wrong and separating. So here's the curious thing. You do inner work and you work on your process of right and wrong or, and becoming more open to hearing other people's opinions the east sector of your house might get fixed, you might move, different things happen. So the short version really for this month is the best sectors to use are the northeast, the north, and the northwest. The other sectors are, uh, I would say the one that's the most tricky is the west, if you will. The five flies into the west. Now I think the five this year because the original, this is for practitioners, because the original five is in the home base for the year. The monthly fives are not as strong, and for sure, if the five flaws into the west, the metal there weakens it, right? However, the five is a really excitable star. And so what it'll do, and the five is the emperor, it's the king. These are just names we use, but it, what it does is it gives you the opportunity. The king likes people to do better. It wants to transform you. So it, it'll bring you opportunities to be transformed. If you're not ready for that, right? And because the seven and the five together can also be talking uh, without thinking, you know, you have to be careful. So I would say uh, the West to me is the most tricky palace. In the Southwest, there's, there's the two star that the year is there with the nine. Now the nine is a good star. Combined with the two though, it's making the two stronger. And so the Southwest, what I would say is, it's very good actually for wealth, if you know how to use it. But the two stars about stagnation. And if you are stuck in your beliefs about money, or if you're stuck in your beliefs about things, the two stars stagnation part comes out. And stagnation might mean you got constipated all month, but it could also mean some health issues come up. Okay, and so I would just say with the Southwest, to be a bit mindful because it could bring, like it's got the positive nine there. I think whatever comes up can get solved, but some health issues might come up. But look at the health issues as what emotions are they bringing up that I need to transform. So that's actually as much as I want to say about the feng shui. I'm just giving you the highlights there. I have three uh, activations for you. Okay, so to, on Monday, now this is a bit complicated. You might not all be able to use this because this combination, this activation is you are taking your Gua and you are activating your Hei Tu combo. Okay, so let me just tell you, if you know your Gua, one, your Hei Tu combo is six, that's Northwest. If you are two, your Hei Tu combo is seven, that's in the West. If you're a three, your combo is eight, which is Northeast. If you're a four, your combo is nine, which is the south. Five, you're not, you cannot be a five because you're, if you're a male and you're a five, you're a two. So then your hey two combo is seven. And if you're a female and you're a five, you're an eight. Your hey two combo is three, which is in the east. Six combo, hey two combos to the one, which is in the north. Seven's combo is to the two, which is in the southwest. Eight's combo is to the three, which is in the east. And nine's combo is to four, 
which is in the southeast. Okay, so what I want you to activate, this is activation of nobleman. Okay, this particular activation, it's a water activation. And so you are activating your personal hey tube combo anytime between 9 and 11 o'clock and or 1 and 3 p.m. I'll get to your question at the end, uh, Susan. Thanks. Our comment, thank you so much. Okay, so activation of nobleman, okay, in your hey to combo sector, Monday between 9 and 11 or 1 and 3. And could you possibly do it, start it at 9 o'clock and let it run all day? Yes, you could, okay? And the um, you could just do, but what I typically do is a two-hour water activation. So that could be a, um, depend on the biggest container you can get to fill it up with water and put a pump in it. And the trick is this is the surface needs to be moving. And so what you're doing is you're stimulating the chi. This is like acupuncture for your house, okay? So the location is personal to you. Then to activate on November, October 20th for spiritual insights and clarity and support from noblemen. So who doesn't need that, okay? That is on October 20th at 165 degrees south 1. So those of you who don't know what South One is, stand in the center of your house and then point, get your iPhone or whatever phone you have, set it to magnetic and then point till you get to 165. And that'll tell you the sector that you want to place that. Ideally, you put the water, again, this is a water activation. You put the water at the farthest point away if you can, okay, at 165 degrees. So this is for spiritual insights, clarity and support. Now, those of you that are practitioners and have seen other people out there, I'm not worried about clashes. If there's a clash to you, there might be less effect. I will tell you if it's an activation that we have to be worried about. But these are times and days and energies that are so positive, they help everybody. But again, this is the thing of action. When I get acupuncture, I know the chi in my body is moving. But it needs to be continually stimulated for it to stay moving, right? I'm at that age in life where I have to do those types of things. Well, houses need stimulation too, right? And then the last, if you will, activation is a meditation. And the meditation is to get insight on how removal of limitations. So I'm gonna tell you, I've been doing a lot of that type of stuff all year myself. Removal of limitations also means you have to see the feelings that need to be removed. It's not like, oh, I feel so stressful. I'm going to do this meditation to remove limitations. And then all of a sudden I feel peace. You might, but really what likely will come into your mind is what is preventing you from having peace that you need to deal with? What do you need to do? And it might mean watch less TV, or it might mean go get that job, or it might mean right removal of limitations, releasing your negative energy. So this is October 22nd between 9 and 11 a.m. And here I want you to sit in South One or sit in 165 degrees and then face 165 degrees. The time on October 20th is between 11 and 1. Thanks for asking. Yes, 11 and 1, between 11 and 1 for that activation. Okay, so those are the three activations I'm giving you. And then I want to just end this. I'll read through your comments or if you have a question, please put in your questions and that. And I want to just say to you for this month as well that I call on the beings of light and higher consciousness to be present and guide you, to grant you courage to be the person you long to be, to make the changes you need in order to be happy. May your angels and the beings of light support you and help you to stop running away from your fears and to guide you to the insights and realizations that need to be seen for the actions that are best to be taken and for people to support you and for the willingness and courage to get up each day to breathe and to be present. May you be guided this month to the life of your dreams. So yeah, that takes me to the end of this presentation. Yeah, you're so welcome. Nice to see you, Nadia. It's been a while. Yeah, so okay. now. Last blurb here. So Monday, if you haven't signed up, manifestation, okay, no, no. 
Monday is moon circle. <laughs> Monday's moon circle, 7 to 8.30. I know it's Thanksgiving Day here in Canada, but maybe it's a good day to join. Um, we're getting a couple hundred people in this. We're creating a community of like-minded souls who want to do better. So please join us in the moon circles. Ah, Marina, lovely to see you. Then... I have started this class that I just love. It's three months now called Manifestation Magic. Okay, Manifestation Magic. And so in Manifestation Magic, each season we go through a process. This is a membership class where I get to go deeper with you and you get access to our private Facebook group. And I'm in there almost every day with positive sayings, with tips, with different things. And we're talking about how to create altars and how to do stuff. I talk about the astrology, how to use your day master in a more specific way. We get to go a little bit deeper, but I also get to talk more about consciousness work, which is my favorite part in all this, because it is the consciousness work that's going to change your life. So that class, you can attend one time or you can buy a six month membership. And the next three months are going to be very cool because we're going to I'm going to teach you how to find your spirit animal and how to work with your spirit animal. We're going to work with the tarot. And then, of course, we're reaching the end of the year. So all the predictions and things are coming up. So that's all really cool. You're going to have to man the activation, the first activation, your Gua 7. So in the Southwest, okay, Manuela, if you are a 7, your Hey 2 combo is in the Southwest. And so you put water in the Southwest at either between 9 and 11 or 1 and 3, okay? And so, yeah. The And then the last thing, I have a mastery class. So we have classes that are like free and then at the higher end. Um, I'm going to teach this and I may never teach it again. I don't know because it's a big class. Astrology for the I Ching. Okay. And so we are going to, there is a method in astrology where you take your Chinese astrology chart and you attach numbers to it and they create two hexagrams. And those two hexagrams then create monthly hexagrams and yearly hexagrams. So that's part of the class, just learning how to get the hexagrams, right? Then you're on a certain line. Well, the I Ching is there to give us guidance. And so most people, I find, don't really know how to read a hexagram. What does a yin line mean? What does a yang line mean? What do the different trigrams inside of it mean? And how to read that. And we will be spending a great deal of time looking at how to interpret yin and yang and the five elements. So no matter where you are in your metaphysical practices, this will take you to a higher level. That's a five-day class that's coming up in November. And um, Lois will be posting up some links here. And you'll get stuff in it. Make sure you're signed up also for my newsletter uh, on the website because this is where the deals come through too and the early bird specials, okay, as well. And I think that's it. Oh, in December and January, my annual classes, we haven't got them up on the website, but that's coming. There's two full day classes coming. Yeah. Anyways, thank you all very much. Uh, thank you for your comments. Uh, Larry, October 20th, South One is the spot and yeah when you are conscious you transcend karma this is so powerful i believe this wholeheartedly thank you susan i noticed that you are doing um oh what's that called human design which is very cool yeah so yeah lovely people thank you and uh, we will see you again bye